Good day, I'm JD and welcome to my channel. Today is International Wrinkly Black T-Shirt Collar Day, as you can see. Today we're going to be doing some very, very precise work on this beautiful old Illinois pocket watch. I made a previous video on this uh, watch stripping it down, and this watch has numerous jewel problems. Um, and the jewel settings are going to be very difficult to replace a jewel in. Um, and this is because the jewel seems to be flush with the setting and it doesn't seem to have much material burnished over that jewel to keep it in place. So let's take a little closer look at the problem I'm defining. All right, here's the issue. So this is the center wheel uh, upper jewel. I'm going to try to point at this here. So this is the jewel here. And it's held in place by three screws. So this is the bottom of the jewel. And as you can or cannot see, um, it seems like the factory setting of this jewel, uh, when they put this thing in, uh, it's flush with the jewel setting. The jewel is flush with the jewel setting. And the material burnished over it seems to be only on one side, which uh, makes kind of no sense at all. So th this side right here, as you can see where I'm pointing, I'm trying to point under magnification here. So. This is uh, where this where this material is. The other side doesn't seem to have any material over the jewel, which makes no sense at all. So I am going to go for some kind of an adventure today. So today I'm going to make a jewel setting and replace this jewel uh, as part of the setting. So let me just get a little closer here and see if I can. It's very difficult to move this thing around without looking at it. So there we go. So there's where the burnishing is. It's just a bit of burnishing over the top. and. I'm not sure if they friction set this jewel or they pressed it in uh, with friction setting or they glued it in or what they did in the Illinois factory, but this is a problem. Um, the second jewel in the train here that's also got an issue is this jewel here that's cracked. Um, and this is a single jewel. Let me line this up. Uh, it's not a bad angle there because you can still see the light here. So this jewel is also not doing so well. It's cracked. Let me get, let's get down here. There we go. This is a jewel I'm talking about, uh, and the jewel is cracked. Um, the hole seems to be okay, but halfway up the rim of the inside of the hole, uh, this is where the jewel material is cracked out. So, so both these jewels are in settings. Let me just flip this around here so you can see this. I may have to refocus. Um, there's, there's setting number one. I'm going to refocus live here. Uh, I'll try to anyway. So there's the setting uh, here, and. This is a brass, I suspect, uh, jewel setting. Uh, so there's nothing. i got to move over to point at this thing. There we go. There's the brass jewel setting there, and it's held in place by, by three screws. Um, I'm not sure how much work these screws actually do. It doesn't look like there's a cut-in into the setting. It just looks like the screws are pressing right down on the top of the setting. So I'm going to find a jewel that works with this particular wheel. Um, and fit that and then and then use that jewel uh, to cut my setting here and then cut the setting and see if I can uh, do a fine job at that. So the second one here I've got to work on is this one here. Um, with any luck I'll be able to pop this uh, jewel out of the uh, setting and replace the jewel. Um, with no luck at all I have, to, I have to make this setting as well. I do have a lot of jewel settings I could steal from and maybe I've got a setting that's exactly like this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, that'd be the preferred option as opposed to spending the time to actually make a setting. Um, and I've got, in this watch, I've got uh, two more, uh, possibly three actually, because I've got to check the lower balance jewel. But at least two more settings I've got to deal with, because this watch is very old and it hasn't had any attention since the uh, 70s, I believe, I was told. So I'm going to make these jewel settings, and of course if I screw up the jewel setting, um, then I've got to make another one, and then I've got to make another one, and I've got to make another one. So it's going to be a bit of trial and error. Um, I, I still have to debate whether I make that center one first or whether I attack this one here. So I'll see uh, in a few seconds. I'll have a look at that. I'm also going to go through and, and flip through the uh, Chicago School of Watchmaking uh, manual, uh, student book or student manual, and show you exactly how this setting is going to be cut. And then I'm going to set my lathe up. Um, I need uh, jeweling chucks for that, uh, uh, which fit in the, your normal collet, um, and we'll have a look at that as well. And I'll need to make sure my gravers are nice and sharp, and I'm able to, to uh, cut this spec. So 
So let's uh, start with the adventure. All right, this is a train jewel. So we're, we're steps in setting a train jewel here in the Chicago School of Watchmaking. This is lesson 30, and this is under lathe work. So I believe this is the first lesson on lathe work. Um, and uh, of course the first thing they're doing is trying to teach you how to uh, set a train jewel or make a uh, make a jewel setting. So we have um, get my famous tweezers out used for pointing. So first thing you do is you need to select the jewel that fits for the uh, wheel that you're that in question. So in this case it's a center wheel. So I'm going to grab, this is live and interactive here boys, live and interactive. So what I'm going to do is I grab the center wheel that I have here and just simply I put this in one of my uh, bench um, bench blocks like this, like that. And then I pick the jewel that's the right um, diameter uh, for the hole, the hole diameter. Um, and this was a, ooh, do, 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 I can't remember. Anyway, it was like I think a 30 or 30, 34, I think. So you pick the jewel diameter and then you try to pick uh, the, the, that's the hole, the hole size. And then you pick the uh, diameter of the jewel that's um, kind of closest to the existing one, but it doesn't necessarily need to be because you're going to make the setting anyway, but you've got to enough, leave enough material on the outer rim of that diameter to, uh, to, to leave burnishing material to cover the jewel. So, so you've got to pick the jewel first. So the best thing to do is match that jewel up with the, uh, the current one that's in the bridge. Um, this is the bridge that we're talking about right now. Um, and the jewel is the jewel is actually the uh, center jewel here that's uh, cracked and or if I decide to do this one <laughs> but it's the center jewel and so I want to lay a jewel in on the back side because the front side the diameter looks to be narrower than the back side because it it tapers in uh, as the jewel goes in and these are old jewel settings so they're not friction settings so they're curved they're olive shape curved kind of like what you see here um, and so I just have to lay a jewel down and make sure it's uh, kind of close to this uh, the diameter of the setting and then you just trial the jewels on the uh, on the uh, existing uh, uh, wheel that you're the, the, the pivot for the wheel that you're replacing the jewel for um, and make sure the hole size is right and then you need to make sure the the depth or thickness of the jewel is accurate um, and you can do that actually by sizing the thickness of this jewel if you want to um, it's that'll that'll uh, determine how much uh, end shake you have so if you have a jewel that's too big you're obviously not going to be able to burnish that in once you make a setting unless you make it to, to actually be able to burnish but it'll stick up through the plate and then you won't have any end shake on there so that's that's not going to work for you so in this case uh, what you want to do is uh, is make sure that the jewel has the right uh, depth there so you can use your seats jeweling tool and measure the depth of the jewel or you can try to measure the jewel size or once you pop this jewel out of the setting if you don't break the jewel even if you break it you can still measure the uh, the uh, thickness of that jewel um, so you have to be fairly close but not not uh, religiously close to that thickness as long as the setting you make um, ends up flush with this and the jewel in this case is flush uh, then you won't have an issue so, so if you if you aim to make that flush and your jewel is too big, then you actually have to pick another jewel. So, but the first thing to do then is to is to pick the appropriate jewel that you think that will work. And remember that if you screw this up, you can still try again. So you you're not you're not stuck with screwing it up and you've ruined anything because you're going to take this old setting out, um, and you're you're going to be replicating that old setting as close as you can. Um, but it doesn't have to be absolutely exact. These are not gold settings. Um, let me just zoom in here for a second. Now I'm going to try to hold on to this. It's going to be difficult. But there's the jewel in the setting there. And as you can see, it's almost flush, but not quite flush with, the, uh, with this particular uh, with the plate. Um, uh, but you can have a look at that close and see where it sits in the plate and, and make sure that your end shake is, is appropriate. So. So I think uh, there, there are, there's a little bit of end shake with the center wheel anyway. So you, you do have some movement in the center wheel. So you don't have to be as precise maybe as you do with, when you get to the escapement jewel uh, that sometime is capped. Um, but you're, if you pick the right jewel size and you make the setting and replicate it, 
and you make it flush onto that uh, this flush onto the back surface of the of the plate, uh, you should be fine. So, so we're going to go ahead and uh, and describe how this is done. All right, the first thing you do is you get a piece of pegwood, which I have here, and this piece of pegwood and pokes through the jewel hole, as you can see. So you got to shave this down, and then you just push it down a bit so that the end of the pegwood um, stops the jewel from coming off the pegwood, and then you use this this jewel on the pegwood continuously to measure the hole that you're drilling um, in the in the piece of uh, of material brass material that you're uh, making the setting with. So, so that's stage one uh, or step one. So step two is um, you need to drill um, a hole in your stock. So you pick a stock a rod that's uh, a bit bigger than the diameter of the outer diameter of the existing setting, right? And then you uh, you pick a, a drill bit, and I've got these uh, these drill bits right here, mascot uh, drill bits. Uh, and you pick a drill bit that that is, uh, if you look at the the hole that's in the existing setting, that that drill bit will fit fit through the existing setting hole. So that's all you have to make sure is that it'll go all the way through that existing setting hole. Um, and then you need to drill into that into that material, uh, deep into the material, because you're going to be drilling beyond where the setting is, so that way when you cut away the setting on that side, it's exposing the hole on the side where the, uh, where you're, I believe it's the, uh, the upper side, I'll, I'll see in a second, anyway, so you're exposing that hole, so you'll have the jewel exposed on the top and the bottom, so that the staff the, uh, can go through, or the uh, pivot can go through that jewel unobstructed, so you need to pick the jewel the uh, the uh, drill here. I've got these really nice mascot drills. And just a tip here, when you're when you're using these these kind of drills here, these drills have as it, sh as it says here, it's got a little kind of a peak on the drill or a crown, a peak, a roof. I'll say um, these work really well to drill into materials. I've bought drills that have your standard spiral drill, and that spiral drill um, often doesn't work drilling into material accurately. And I've taken those uh, spiral drills before and I've actually formed a peak like this. So I've actually taken a, a, a plate, a diamond plate, and, and scraped it down to make it look like this. And, and it works really, really well. So, But I do have these mascot drills, so we're going to try these out to drill, drill through and make that initial hole. So that's the mascot drills. Um, so then I got to look up. I got to look up because it's because because everything is backwards right now. So, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm cutting uh, material away, right, to put the to put the jewel in. So, and I'm not going to describe how to use my my gravers to cut away that material. But you got to cut away a square like this um, to to get this to get this uh, setting in. Um, and as you can see, this you're doing. We see the figures here is 30. Uh, 30, whatever, 35, 4, 5, okay, the bottom one's the next one, so you're doing that, and you're measuring this here, and then you're, then you're drilling, uh, then you're, uh, testing it with your, uh, with your drill, or sorry, with your jewel, so you're putting the jewel in here to test the, that the size is accurate, um, I don't know if I'd worry about beveling it here, but, because, uh, it depends on the shape of your jewel, so if the shape of your jewel dictates that you need to bevel it a bit, then so be it, but, but this is the first cut anyway. It's got to go in a bit deeper than this in order to get material to cut away and burnish it. So that's the first thing you're doing. Uh, in this diagram, the second thing that you're doing is actually you've got that hole cut. So you're trying to shape this this hole here like this. Now, I, I think that you could probably leave this square if you wanted to because it doesn't make uh, might not make a hill of beans difference as long as the edge here is the right size to catch the jewel. So, but but in this case, they're saying, okay, just give give that a little bit of an angle here as you as you scrape it away. So that's your initial hole. Give that a bit of an angle, and then with this tool, they're making an edge here, and that's for the jewel to sit in. So they're going a bit deeper. There's where the initial line was, and they're cutting that down a bit at about uh, about a 60 degree angle, maybe 45. I'm not sure. I'll get my. I think that's a 45 degree angle. So 45 degree angle out there. So cut that away like that and then the next thing you're doing is you're getting in nice and tight and you're taking your graver and you're making these marks here so you're cutting in with your graver so the graver is 
is flat on one side and angle on the other and this is the burnishing material so you're very carefully making this groove to allow you to have some material to fold over the jewel so that's the next thing you're doing and then in this video here or sorry this picture here diagram here what they're doing is taking a a uh, tool to actually fold this material over the jewel so and I've, I've got tools to do that um, if I look at my uh, set of tools here i think this is the right series of tools um, and these are burnishers so this this would go over that hole and you'd adjust uh, yeah that's right and you would adjust this and these are round and then they would able it enable you to pu to push that material over now the tricky part of that is i think uh, that in this case here when you've got when you're working on the lathe um, you actually need uh, a knife kind of a knife material to turn that to turn the lathe by hand as you as you burnish this material over so I'll see if I can show you how that's done after I don't have the single knife flake material but you can make one uh, but it has to be very polished in order to do that otherwise you're going to scrape this and when you when you go ahead and move that material over it's also good to put some oil on that material because uh, the, the oil will prevent this material from getting caught on whatever burnisher that you're using so you could take a uh, uh, you know a piece of metal like like this here and then make the end of that sort of at an angle so it doesn't catch uh, and then use that as the burnisher but this this would have to be modified considerably considerably to do that so i'm going to choke on my own words here so in this diagram here you've got the jewel now uh, in place and burnished over the over the top of the material like that so so that's that's all good um, in the past, I haven't burnished it until I've actually finished cutting the whole jewel, so I know that the whole thing actually works and is in place before I commit to doing this. Once I've committed to doing this, and if it doesn't fit perfectly and I've got to cut a new one, now I've got to cut my jewel out of the actual hole and, 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 and save it, basically. So, But you're cutting this deep enough in and burnishing it in enough to give you enough material to make sure it's surfaced properly, right? So. So there you go, you're doing that. That's burnished in perfectly. Um, I'm not sure why they have this diagram here, but let's just continue on. So what I want to do now is shape this material because this is now the rod here. And in this case, this here part of the jewel is the part that's facing inward towards the wheel. The wheel would be on this side and the jewel would be on the other side. So if I take my wheel here and this is the upper I'm, I'm cutting. The wheel would be like this, right? Sticking inside that that jewel, like that. And you can see the, the there's not a lot of room there for that pivot to, to, to go up and down. Not a lot of action room, so end shake room. So so but I want this this to sit nicely in place and I don't want the the this uh, uh, material here to interfere with the wheel at all. So it all has to be cut perfectly. So the next step then is to is to take the existing jewel for the uh, for this watch or for this uh, the jewel on the plate in this case the center jewel on the plate and you take that out and use that as a master so I have to see if that center jewel has a lip on it the setting rather so and I met setting before but so you take the setting and use that as a master and then uh, I think this has a little lip on it and if there's a lip don't give me any lip don't give me any lip let me flip this again and see if it shows the lip yeah there's the lip so so if you look over up here, maybe move my book just a tad because the picture's on the top. Um, yeah, there we go. So there's the lip here. So now um, I can't cut that lip now because I've taken the... Uh, I can cut that lip while the, the material is still in the lathe here, right? And so I can cut that lip and I go to size that lip to the existing uh, plate. So I will use the plate itself um, I'll cut it down, measure the lip, and then I'll just keep fitting the plate on until that lip goes all the way through and through that hole and then catches on the outside of the plate, right? You had a rim of the plate. And then I, at some point in time, have to cut this jewel away, right? So I got to cut this material away here for the top of the setting and then round it off so it's all pretty. So, so they're using a brass cement and stuff like that to, to put this uh, in place. Um, and I'm saying, no, nah, I don't want to do that. Uh, so what I have is uh, jewel chucks, so friction jeweling chucks. 
So these are the jewel chucks here. And again, I think I probably have to do a little bit of a close up here. So just stand by. There, I got a close up on the, uh, the best chuck that represents what I want to do. So this chuck right here, as you can see, it has a little, a, a little rim on it. So what I'm doing is I'm placing the setting on that jewel chuck. So the setting is now placed with the, the rim that I cut would go inside of that jewel chuck, which would expose the upper part of the setting, right? So, so I cut a, I cut a, a rim on the setting, as you saw, and I'm, pla I'm sizing that. I've got a bunch of jewel chucks here, and I'm sizing that, that the, the rim so that it fits in here. And now I've got the upper part of the jewel setting exposed, and I can start working on that. So let's just go back to the diagram again. All right, we're back to the diagram. So this would be, this here would be the jewel chuck. In this case, they've cemented on the uh, the setting, right, onto here. But I don't want to do that. What I want to do is is actually use the the jeweling, the friction jeweling chuck, uh, which fits inside of another chuck. I think it's a size 30 or something and that compresses around the the rim that i made here um, and that holds that setting in place so and then once you we held the setting in place they have to call this a stripping tool but you can just use a graver then you're able to cut this down to the right the right height or this this uh, distance here on the, on the edge can be the right one and match the existing setting right so you don't want it to be too high or too low uh, as well if you want some decoration, you can cut the inside here to expose more of the top of that jewel. And then this, in this case here, the oiling cup of that jewel is on the top. Um, so you've already cut it in, you've already burnished it in, and it's on the top. So, but back, when we go back to the uh, initial cut, you just have to make sure you take enough material off so that jewel is fitting in there nicely and you're able to burnish that over. Um, and then you're able to cut it. So I can do all that cutting and everything once I fitted the jewel and I have my little edge for the burnishing um, I may finish the setting first right and then fit the jewel just in case I screw up and it doesn't fit for some reason then I can I have the jewel out already and I can make another one of these so so let me flip here and see if there's any mo more great information on this uh, so there's the uh, kind of the end result um, and it's showing the jewel sitting nicely in the setting and it's showing a nice little wide opening which makes it look very nicely decorated sorry i've got this on the other side but but that's how that's done so um this this is a uh then this the chicago school of watchmaking then goes on to show you how to do the exact same thing uh, but you're now you're doing it for a a balance a jewel upper lower uh, balance setting um, and in this case uh, you're flipping this around so the jewel hole as you can see the jewel is the is the other way and you're looking for the curved part of the jewel here in this case to be accepting the uh, the pivot on this side right as you recall uh, and then you're you're actually putting a cap jewel on the top there so it's curved on this side with a cap so that's going this way so it's flipping the jewel in the other way but it's basically the same technique um, except when you get to this point here you le you're leaving that flat right and then you're cutting it over and bending this material over so so that's how you do those um, but anyway back to the problem I have at hand this is what I've, I'm going to cut today um, and this is uh, essentially the technique I'm going to use and I'll show you that as, as I'm building this jewel up so now I've got to get my lathe uh, set up um, I've got to pick my stock material for this particular jewel I've got to take the setting out of the bridge that I, that I showed you so I've got to remove remove this setting from the bridge um, this one right here from the bridge I, I got to size and make sure I've got the exact right jewel for this particular uh, setting and then I've got to start a cutting all right so here's basically what I need to start this activity so there's the uh, watch movement and there's the plate so I can I'll move this movement out of the way don't need this right now um, and there's the uh, the plate here and there's the s existing setting so I'll take that setting out um, but the first thing I do is is size that jewel so I'll use the setting here and this and these jewels here so I'm looking for a jewel that'll fit onto the pivot on the end of the center wheel 
that's got very little side shake uh, and it's the right uh, the right depth of the jewel so generally they're all kind of the same so I'm not too worried I believe that I did some work on this already and I set I set aside some jewels in this little container here so so what I'll do is take these jewels and just keep putting them on until I get the right one that fits and I'll look at the diameter of the jewel itself to make sure it's it's not greater than the diameter of the jewel that's in the setting and the reason for that is that is that um, if I have to cut a, uh, a piece of brass that's too wide then I won't be able to fit that on with the screws that are here so so that becomes an issue if that happens so that's the first job I'm going to do Let's hang on so here I found a jewel that fits over the setting or the pivot rather and nicely but if I put it down here uh, on top of this um, plate with the existing jewel I don't know if I if it's too big I think it looks it looks to be too big which means when I cut the setting it won't give me enough uh, real estate to burnish that in with the material so although the whole size is perfect the jewel diameter is not so in this case here it doesn't look like I have the right jewel in place so I may have to um, punch out that jewel and then order the jewel of the right hole size and diameter so which is not a difficult thing to do but I was hoping to have the right jewel um, I do have a a whole lot of jewels coming in next week that probably would work with this so but I'm going to then not give up yet I'm going to go to the uh, the intermediate wheel and see if I can uh, use that and replace that uh, second uh, jewel in the plate which is this one right here because this jewel here is just almost worse condition than this particular jewel here so even though I will have to replace that center jewel now this uh, secondary wheel here fits into the jewel like so um, so I need to make sure that uh, first of all I had the right end of the of the uh, but right pivot on the wheel so I don't screw that up and now I've got to find the jewel size that fits in here I'll go hunting here first on my in my with my uh, jewels here but then I do have a set of uh, seats jewels that uh, might fit this particular uh, jewel size I just need the whole size here and then the um, and then the uh, diameter of the jewel itself so I can do some some uh, hunting in my seats jewels first let's remove the setting from this uh, particular uh, movement so I can get a, a good grip on this thing here the other remote chance here is that I do have a full uh, a, a jewel in setting that would fit on that as well so I gotta put this screw somewhere where I don't forget it and then put it into the uh, movement holder so I don't forget that so there's the um, take this out here too and I just want to push that setting out sometimes you can just use a piece of pegwood on a block and push down on it and the jewel setting will come right out so let me just take these two out like that and then this jewel setting would be coming out I believe it pushes out um, this way so, so I'd have that on the block like that pick a smaller hole so I don't put any undue pressure on the particular setting and then just push out on this see if I can do this with pegwood if I can I can I can use a um, I can use a stake for my staking set as well so I wimped out and I uh, am going I decided to push the setting out with this my seats tool and I just need to set the depth so it doesn't go down too far so I just rotate the uh, micrometer part of that tool up um, just to give me a little bit of I want a bit of depth but I don't I just want to push it out I don't want to um, go too far on that so set that up and make sure it goes through and there we go there I think that's good there and I've already picked the uh, the flat pusher on the other end to, to work on this and the screws are out so this should work perfectly so there shouldn't be an issue here so we just push that like that and so there's the jewel sitting there so it's out now it's out and as you can see and there was absolutely almost no pressure to push that out so there it is there 
Um, and let me look inside to see if there is a rim in there. Um, you see, I can't really see right now. And yeah, I guess there is a rim. It's ever so slight. So the rim on the inside of this plate is ever so slight, which means the jewel itself, the setting itself, would have a, a bit of a rim on it. So I'm going to just take this out and see if I can dump the jewel without having to poke through the other side, which uh, may, or may, or not, may or may not have to do. I think I need to poke through the other side to get that out. So just pick a very small screwdriver and you should just be able to poke the setting out without a problem. I'm hoping. Get a smaller screwdriver. Something that actually works. How about a larger screwdriver? And there we go. That should do. There's the setting just poked out and we'll zoom up on that and see what that looks like. Alright, there's the jewel setting right there. And as you can see, there is a um, there's a rim or an edge that you have to deal with, just like I said earlier. So there's a setting, there's a little rim right there. So um, when I cut this setting, I've got to account for the rim. Uh, first thing I'm going to do though is see if I have a setting just like this, save me the time, but not very good for the video. But I'm going to check and see if I have a setting like this. So I just tip this one over a bit, and there's a the jewel sitting in that setting, and that's the uh, the top part of the jewel, I believe, um, or that's the bottom part of the jewel, there's the top part. And you see how the small, the hole is a bit smaller on the top, and when I pick my um, my, my drill, um, I got to make sure it goes through that hole, just that size, um, and not bigger. So if I want only part of that jewel to be exposed to allow me to cut the right one. So I'm going to look at this first and see if I can size this up maybe find a jewel uh, get myself all set um, but I will check the other jewels that I have to see if there's a jewel like that um, regardless if I have a jewel like this I may cut one anyway and see what it looks like so next step coming so I have uh, quite a few settings in my collection um, and one thing I do before I even look for a setting um, I'd say put a little tiny red mark on the edge of this one so I know that this is the original. Um, I do have another others in there probably with red marks, but I want to make sure I, I re remember that this is the original setting like that. So if I put settings beside it, I don't lose my original setting. So I just put a little mark on there and now I've got to go through all of these settings. Most of these settings are for upper lower balance jewels. I don't know if I've got any settings here that would be that would work with this particular um, where the, this particular jewel where it's got to be flat on the bottom side of the setting and not uh, oval uh, being prepared to accept a cap right so most of the settings are are kind of like this one here which is kind of it's got the the uh, the oil part is on the inside so it's not flat on this side so I can't use that um, so uh, I, I'm going to hunt, but I have a feeling I'm just going to have to make the setting. So this is my uh, last bottle of settings, and then I'm screwed. So this is, uh, I just recently procured this. Plus I have another bunch of jewels coming in on their own, plus I've got a bunch of settings coming in on their own. So I look at these ones here, and sure, that's a good one, but look at the size of that thing. Um, this is a nice setting here for a, uh, for a jewel as well. Um, for for a plate a plate jewel, so this is the right the right uh, jewel, but and it may even be the right size, right? But that isn't it's too big, or too small. Yeah, that's too small. So it's, but it's way outside of what that setting is gonna should look like. So if I look at some of these. Um, this one here is flat on the bottom side. Uh, no, this is actually made for a a balance lower upper lower balance jewel as well. Some of these are are caps or cap jewels. This is a setting as well, but look at the size of that thing. Um, and this is a balance one as well. Uh, you can tell 
Uh, it's coming in from the bottom. It's flat on one side. And it's accepting oil on the other side, but but it's not going in the right way. Um, and I've got you know this one here, which is is cupped on the wrong side again. So if it was coming in the other way, maybe that something like that would work. But again, wrong one. Uh, this one here is this one looks like a a pretty big one actually so this one's going to fall right through the hole so there you go that's the wrong one as well um so i think my hunting here it's a lot of goodwill involved in my hunting so this is what i call goodwill hunting and pause for the comic joke someone told me to stop talking and making stupid jokes during my video so you guys can comment whether you think i should do that or not right so See that one there is the wrong type style. So at the end of the day, I think my only alternative is to make a setting. Which is good because that's what I wanted to do with this video. So let's carry on. So um, I believe just by trial and error in my little container of jewels, I have found the perfect jewel. This jewel seems to fit very nicely. I'll measure the uh, the hole size but it fits on the pivot very nicely um, it looks to be perfectly new um, it also looks to be the same vintage color as these old jewels so and there's the old setting here and when I put the uh, this jewel on top of the old setting to see to just size it with the setting if I do this and grab it very carefully see if I can do this See, it's the perfect size. It's not coming off. Come on. Maybe I'm not grabbing the jewel. Just use a little piece of Rodico to take it off here. There we go. So, if I take that jewel and then lay it down onto the setting, I think I may have the perfect size. Let me just write that down. There's the jewel. And I put that on the setting and it looks like it's the exact same diameter of that of the previous jewel, which is wonderful. So that should fit in nicely. I could try to burnish this one out first and see if I can put the old jewel in but again if I can't what I'll do is make a setting because this is supposed to be all about making a setting so uh, we'll see what happens next here so in this case I'm going to use a pump pusher and this is a pump pusher so it's basically a pusher with a springed very sharp pointed pump in the middle and that'll align this perfectly with the jewel so I can't be off when I push that through. So when I put the jewel, um, the jewel here on the, uh, this got to make sure it also goes through here. So uh, you know, it goes through the stump here, and it's not the stump is not too narrow. So this is a probably in my seats jeweling tool, the best stump I have to do, the best stump for the moment. So I could actually get out uh, another. Uh, device I have here which which lets me set the uh, jewel setting down uh, into here and then push it so that might be a little bit better because it's a little I gotta make sure that that setting gets through so I think that's good there um, and then I would have this down like that I don't need to hold that in place. All I need to do is put the pump pusher in and then just move this away here. I'm going to redo the camera angle. So I've got the seats dueling set sitting on my lap here. So I'm trying to get some real estate to do this. And I push the pump pusher through here, put the handle on. I had someone criticize me the other day saying, yeah, I didn't know how to put the handle on and then line it all up. Now that's not far down enough. All right, so I've got to adjust this again to give to make sure it plunges down far enough. Uh, just check the depth on the side. 
and that should do. I'll go a little further down. That's definitely good there. And I just make sure that's aligned and then I can take the pump pusher and put it on the jewel. Like that. And there we have that nicely aligned. And I'm going to push this out and, and see what happens here. So just a little pressure on that and push this out. There we go. So that's out. There's the setting. And I want to check to see if I can still if the burnishing, if it popped out, so the burnishing material popped out. The jewel doesn't look like it's anywhere near that. There's the jewel there. So now I can actually measure the two jewels side by side to see if I've got a, a precise fit. Actually, if I have a precise fit here, then I'm going to end up going to the next plate to see if I can, you know, and I can burnish this jewel in, then I don't have to make a setting. But I do want to make a setting, darn it. I should actually call this adventures in watchmaking as opposed to making a new setting because uh, I get so far I've done everything but but I took the jewel out and this is the replacement jewel here this seems pretty tight though so I have to make sure that this jewel is eh, no it's moving sideways so and I also check the condition of this jewel to make sure I don't have that it is a, a new one it's not in a bad condition I think it is a new one so if I look at these two settings side by side, or these two jewels side by side, this is the old one here that I managed to push out without breaking, which is a wonderful thing. And that's the new one. I put these ones side by side. And they're pretty close. Um, but if I look at the height of the jewel, I may have an issue here. So let me just look at the height of this jewel and see if I don't have any issues. I need to to uh, turn the uh, turn it sideways to look at the height. So no more problems. So the jewel fit perfectly. I looked at the height of the jewel and it is way too small. So that's not good. And uh, it looks like this popped out nicely leaving me the uh, material to burnish in a new jewel. So I'm going to go on a little bit of a hunt for a jewel that looks like this with the right size. So the first thing I need to do is measure the hole size and I'm going to use my, this is a Borel um, gauge. So I just have to take this, uh, this particular gear and find the right hole size, start eyeballing it to start off with and make sure I don't uh, overdo it. So it could be a, a 40 or somewhere in there, maybe a 38. Um, and I just fit the gear, I'll just fit the gear in here and let's turn this around make sure I don't so again under camera under the duress of camera so there we go that's that's in there nicely no problem just move that down a bit and is that going to fit into a 30 oh my god it does so that's a 30 and I'm missing my 28 jewel in here for measuring but maybe with any luck it fits in a 26 and it does so that's a pretty small pivot. So that's a pretty tight fit in that 26, by the way. It's in there now, but I can't seem to get it out. So, so it's between 26 and 28. That's 28, and it looks like it's the end shake's not too bad. So I think I've needed either a 28 or a 30. So it fits 30 perfectly, and a 28. I've got two more of these rulers, but I just didn't bother finding them. So. Somewhere between a 28 and a, I'm gonna want it to say somewhere between a 28 and a 30. So, so I got to get out my seats jewels and have a look for one of those. So I found a 3150 that's too small and a 3180 that's too big. So it would have to be probably a 3170, I suspect. So I thought I had the perfect jewel here. It was a 32170, but I looked under my microscope. And a 32170 has got too much side shake, so I can't use that one. The jewel I picked before is absolutely perfect, but I think that the edges of the jewel might be a little thin for the intermediate wheel. So I need to go hunting again, I believe. So back to the, uh, the hunting grounds for jewels, because what I need to get a jewel anyway to fit this, um, even if I'm, you know, going to make the uh, the uh, setting. Alright, so plan D. Since I'm going to end up making the setting, 
I can pick a uh, jewel that's slightly smaller than this setting, but I need to pivot the hole size to be right. So if I take a... Uh, these look like they're a little bit thin, even though they're um, the right... supposedly the right hole size. I don't think so, though. They just look a bit to be a bit too thin. So let me just see if that's the right hole size. This does not look like a... Uh, Will not look like the right hole size. Plus, they look super thin. It's a 28. So let me look at see if the 28 is good. Yeah, the 28 does fit. 28 is good but again it looks a bit thin and this is an intermediate wheel so I don't want to get in trouble with this intermediate wheel having not enough jewel surface not sure it looks pretty pretty thin when I look at this one here on the edge, I have to look at the edge of that because this might be thin, but only or it might be thick all the way through until the cup. So I'll just look at the thickness of this jewel under the microscope and be right back. I should click my be right back button. So that's not too bad an amount of material touching that uh, touching the uh, the jewel. So you want to make sure the pivot has got enough. Um, the pivot going through has enough contact material in the jewel, so the 150 uh, would work. It's a little bit of a small jewel, but you know, just make a setting that fits that, and you're good to go, right? You're good as gold. Um, so I'll just set this aside and say, okay, that's uh, an option um, to do this, and that's a uh, 28 150. Um, I have a it's a 7080. I was going to use that for something else. It's a 3150. I don't need to do with that. Uh, 3180. So if I look at a 3180. I know a 3180 fits. The end shakes, the side shakes just a bit bigger, but um, I'm not sure. If I look at that again against this existing jewel, it's a bit, it's on the bigger side, but is it bigger, big enough to cause me issues? So. Because if I cut the uh, if I cut this and it's too big, then I have other issues. So I don't want it to be too big, so, such that I don't have enough material to burnish this thing in, because that could be an issue. So it's a it's a candidate though, because I like the I like the ruggedness and the thickness of this jewel compared to the other one. And I'm going to look at that again under a microscope. So I'm going to go for the 3180. Uh, the 28 might be a little bit tighter from a side shake perspective, but the 30 is not too bad from a side shake. I looked at it. 32 is definitely too much side shake. I just like the girth of the uh, of the 180. So this particular uh, seats jewel has got a lot of diameter on the rim on the inside, so the pivot will grab that or won't wear out that diameter or break that diameter. It doesn't fit into the initial or the existing uh, setting, obviously, because it's a little tiny bit bigger. So really, a, probably a 28170 would be the perfect jewel. Um, but if I use the uh, 3180, um, it should be of no consequence. I should, uh, I'll try that out. So I'm going to make a setting now for this particular jewel. So let's get on with the setting making. Right, just to be safe, you put your setting into a little container here so it doesn't run away. Um, I need to uh, take this uh, wheel and then put that away as well. So I don't need that anymore. And then I'm left with the jewel. And I want to be able to push the pegwood through the jewel here so it's going to aid me in, in sizing or fitting. Right. So what I'll do is get a smaller piece of pegwood like that and I'll sharpen it up nicely so that it it, I can poke that through the jewel setting. And just as I described earlier, I sharpened up the pegwood on the end and I stuck that through the jewel and I pushed down just enough to 
retain that jewel onto the pegwood. So there we go there. So now that jewel can be maneuvered in and out and I'll just keep an eye on it because I don't want to lose that jewel although I've got two other ones which is nice. So now I've got to size out the uh, piece of, um, of brass I'm going to use or uh, brass? I think so. Anyway, that I'm going to use to make this setting with. I think I meant copper. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is it here. Let me back this up a little bit and zoom a bit and there's all my rods. Um, and let's just have a look at these rods and see which one would fit perfectly. So I've got to, I got to, got to, got to make sure this rod is wider than the setting. So the setting is right in here. So I'll just size this out and make sure I pick a, a rod that's slightly wider than the setting that I can use in the lathe to make the uh, part. So I can measure the setting and then measure the rods. That's probably what I should do. And I'll do that using my, I can be, I can rough it in and use my, uh, my caliper here. So just hang on. I meant micrometer. All right, this is the first way of measuring this with a micrometer, but I'm going to go old school later and show you that you can do this with the duzamine gauge. So just, let me just put this on a piece of erotico here and tighten up the micrometer and then zero it out like so and then just widen that up and again this particular setting is this particular is just job is just to make sure that the width of my rod is, is good enough so, so there we go so it's 2.425 2 2 2 so 2.5 would be adequate right so set that aside for now and let's just measure this rod here and see what this measures at and that's uh, 1.9 so that ain't gonna work folks 1.9 is not good enough well folks it looks like I gotta go with about 2.9 which is not too bad and this stuff uh, shaves off pretty fast in a lathe so no problem there so this is the stock I'm gonna use so I just need to cut off uh, a piece of stock to put into the lathe you don't want to put all of this in because it'll start rattling in the lathe. You also want to uh, file the end of this so it's flat, even though you're going to face it off later. So you cut it, um, take out, cut it about here. So a little, uh, you can cut it about an inch, and that way, if you screw up, you can just keep going. So cut it about an inch, and then face that off. So what I'm going to do is file that down flat, and then cut that, and then. When I put it in the lathe, the lathe, the first thing I'm going to do is face this off so I have a clean, a clean face on that to start working on this, uh, this particular um, setting. And then I've got to start by centering it and then drilling that first hole. So, and I'll show you what I do there um, after I get this piece ready. Alright, I've cut my piece of stock brass. I also put it in my polisher so that I could polish the the setting even before I've uh, cut the setting now I've got to pick I think I said this was like 29 so let me just take a 28 call it and see if that works nope 29 maybe it's a 30 no 29 is a fit maybe a little tight though so I'm going to try a 30 and you don't want the spring call it to be too tight over the part that's a 30 that fits absolutely perfectly. That's a 30 there. And then at some point in time, once I cut the setting, I've got to take my jewel chuck, and there's my jewel chuck here. Now this might not be the right jewel chuck. I've got to fit this existing setting into a jewel chuck and then make sure that, that this is the right jewel chuck. So I've got to fit that in there. And I know that this is the, um, the chuck that fits the jewel chuck. So, and that's a bit later on in the process, but just for now, I'll just grab this and show you. So I've got the, um, the jewel chucks here, nah, 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 nah. always focusing. Um, and this is the top of the setting here, so I just want to make sure that this setting fits into one of these jewel chucks. And I'm not really sure which one it'll fit into yet. That's too big, that's huge. This one here might be right, but it looks a bit big as well. 
This might be the one here. So I think that is the one. I'll have to look at this a little closer. Yeah, that seems to be fitting in there. So that's the jewel chuck that I'll end up using after I this one here after I fit it properly. Let me get in a little closer here and see if that's right. Uh, yeah, that's close. That's good enough. That is the jewel chuck. These things are stepped as well. I swear I have another set of jewel chucks somewhere. I don't know where they are. So. I, uh, I'm positive I have another set of jewel chucks. Anyway, you just have to push it in until you hit the rim when you're using these chucks later on. But the first thing we're going to do is cut that setting and make sure that setting fits. So, let me just do some more setup. So having a second look at this setting here, the setting um, doesn't seem to have a step on it. It just goes down and the plate itself on the inside has the step. So the step is right there. So when the setting goes in to the plate, like so, it just goes down to where that uh, where that step is. So it makes it probably a little easier um, to, to make this setting. So of course it goes in like this. So the first thing, next thing I want to do, I don't want to put that in yet, is to actually, um, so I still need the jewel, I think I still need the jewel chucks. Maybe I don't need the jewel chucks. If it's just a flat setting and I don't have the step, then I may not need the jewel chucks. So I still have to cut it off and turn it around. So I don't know. We'll see you later. But I want to make sure I've got the right uh, drill. And I think it's like a 50. So these are my, my drills here that I need to make sure I've got the right drill that goes all the way through this. And that's too way too big. So let me just back that off. That was from the uh, center wheel, I think, from before. So let me try a 36, see if that goes through. Uh, and it does. So there's a 36, and that goes through perfectly. And you want to just make sure that, that if you're taking your drill bit here, this is the largest size drill bit that I need. So a 36 does go through. Um, I can try a 38, but I doubt if that'll work. So I'll just take the 36 and set it aside. And I'll try the 38. Uh, I absolutely think I'm going to make two videos here. Oh, look at that. 38 does fit. So 38 does go in. So that's not bad. That's perfect. So I think I'll use the 38. So put 36 back. And that's near the end of the process anyway. But I'll leave this aside here. Put that in there. And then I've got the... Uh, this here, I don't need that anymore. I've got this here. I've got the uh, chuck in case I need it. I'll throw that in the container here. And I've got the jewel itself that I have to fit. And we just set all this stuff aside. And now I've got to set my lathe up. And when I do the fitting here, I'm going to trim that, trim this down after I drill the hole and fit the jewel. I will be trimming this down to fit inside of this plate and only up to where that step is on the inside of the plate. So that's what I'm going to do. So so I don't need to worry about stepping it beyond that. But what I do need to, to do perfectly is get that uh, the jewel properly set in there, which means i got to drill myself a hole and then i got to drill another hole. So and I think this, this particular bit, like I can't use these drills to actually size the hole. I can't basically drill a a size 50 hole because the hole has got to go all the way through and then you have to have it smaller on the other side um, so it doesn't push through so anyway I've set myself up here with my piece of uh, brass um, I was like what are these brass tweezers these are brass so I shine the brass up so I don't have to shine it up much more after I've done this job so I'll put these away I'll put these away I'll put my bits away and we're and we're almost ready to go I'm missing this where the heck did I put that? Throw that down here. And let's get ready. Let's get set up with the lathe. Alright, this is my Bowley lathe. And um, I'll check to make sure there's enough oil in the caps here before I start. Um, and it's my tool rest here. It's probably pretty, pretty close uh, right now. But the first thing I want to do 
is put that part in the uh, brass part in here for for the cut so I wanted to uh, I'm gonna tighten this up and just leave enough on the end to work with um, and I want to see if this is spinning true because the the parts very small but I have to leave enough to do a cutaway here um, at very close so I think I'll leave about this much of the part sticking out and then I will just spin this to see if it's uh, if it's running true um, hopefully it is just this very small piece of brass so it shouldn't be too bad of a deal here uh, That's not bad there. Again, it's uh, just a chunk of brass, so tighten that up here. And <laughs> make sure that's nice and tight. I don't have any issues. All right. And the first job I got to do is face this off. So just make it flat. Um, you can file it flat, but I just like to grave it flat. So I'll face this off. Uh, I have to. Why is this in the way? <laughs> I think I gotta turn my uh, this sideways just a bit to do a proper facing off of this part. So, and I gotta make sure it's the right height and all kinds of other stuff. So I'll just show you how I do this, and then and then I'll do the initial cuts and show you what I'm doing before I stop. And this will be part one. All right, I'm just gonna start facing off this material. Maybe I get a better view here. Well, that's not a bad view there, except you can see all the crap I have on the floor behind me. So I'm going to face this off with a normal, uh, I guess it's a pointed engraver. These are all carbide gravers and try to get that as flat as possible. Take the material off the edge. So that's not too bad there. So that's that's pretty uh, pretty flat. It's faced off nicely. And you got to make sure you don't have a center point on there. So one final cleanup. And I'm doing all this by hand. And there we go. So that's done and cleaned up. So. So I've got to grave this down now to the to the width of that plate. So the plate, this is the plate here. So if I'm looking at this hole here, there's a step in there. So I need to to bring that down to that to that level. So and I know that if I use my duzamine gauge, grab the old duzamine, the old duzamine. And I just, you know, measure the jewel, the jewel setting. Um, I think the setting is in here, and then measure the uh, material. I can cut a lot faster doing that than I can any other way. So, so if I just measure the uh, measure this with my duzamine gauge here, as you can see in the other camera up top, um, I just will just keep that in the jar so I don't move it around, and I'll just measure that and say okay. There I've got, let's bring that over here, there it is there, don't flick that, look up, and that's 20, 24, so it's just around 24, so that's the width of that setting, uh, the diameter of the setting, I should use the right terms here, so I'll put this stuff back in here so I don't lose it, that's the diameter of the setting, and we've got, as you knew from before, it's pretty fat. It's uh, 30, so I want 24. I don't have to take much material off, actually. And I really don't need to worry about... Um, I'm not making a... Uh, I'm not making a... a uh, bounce staff here, so I don't have to worry about tapering and all that stuff. I just need to remove that much material, right? So I just need to set up my... Uh, and I can probably use this graver. What am I doing here? There we go. And I think this needs to go a bit higher to catch this material properly and just measure that. And you want to be as close to the um, 
I'm going to be around the center of that piece of material with this graver. Right around, it's probably not too bad there. It gives me a bit of action, plus I want to make sure I'm as close as possible. So and the closer you go, the lower you got to move this uh, tip over tool rest here. So that might be good enough because that's not going to chatter because it's soft material. So I doubt if I'm going to have a chatter here. To ch -ch chatter and make sure my tool rest is uh, as close to this as possible. So let me just tighten that up. You see, loosey, righty, tighty, lighty, righty, righty, lefty, tighty. Something like that. <laughs> so I got my gauge here, which is a really fast way to make sure I don't lose my jewel. And this is a really fast way of taking down material. So, and I can take quite a quite a, mi a bit material down. So I'm going to take the material down and fit this first before I drill my hole, because it's pretty close, I believe. So it's not going to be an issue. Um, so I think they tell you to drill the hole first and then take the material down after. One way or the other, I don't know. It's. Uh, I guess I could drill the hole first and then take the material down, but I don't know. I'd love to take the material down and then drill the hole. See if that works. Because I guess if you drill the hole first, you've got more strength in the material, and you, then you don't have to worry about that, right? So, so if I take the drill and and I drill my hole, let's see if I can set this up here. Oh, come on, come on, come on. There we go. I got my collet holding uh, micrometer level drill. So, and the drill bit is in here. So let me get the. I'll be a good boy here and follow the book. Uh, step. This is step one. Well, maybe I'll just make the whole darn video and be a three-hour video, the world's longest video. So I just have to size the collet to hold this and the collet holding tailstock here. So this takes a 15. So I just gotta put this put this in. And I, come on, grab it, grab it, grab it. Just gotta grab the uh, I think I gotta move the this all the way in. Am I too tight or what? What's going on here? Oh, there we go. So I'm just screwing that in right now. And I probably should find center before I actually uh, do this, but I'll just back this off a bit and see if I can find center on this jobby do hickey. Uh, it might not be necessary because it's a pretty rough cut. So I, uh, yeah, I would have to just drill. I'd have to do this to find center. So. All right, that's center enough, folks. And then move this up, and if I fail, I can try again. So I have to tighten this. It looks like it's centered. So I want to tighten this up so it's uh, nice and tight. I've used, uh, and also, another thing you want to do is make sure that, the, uh, that this drill is as close to the end of the shaft as you can get it. That way you don't have much change in uh, it won't rattle basically right so um, here I've got a thing on the top here you can see on the upper upper camera I lower that a bit let me lower the upper camera so there you go so I tighten that up and I can once I get that tight I can tighten this up <laughs> there we go so that's nice everything is tight here so that should drill so let's see what happens um, I want to loosen, tighten, what do I want to do here? I want to loosen this up so I can go back and forth, right? Uh, yeah, there we go. So I can now go back and I can travel back and forth, but this is tight, so then I drill the hole. And then I'll move the, um, the tailstock as close to the piece as I can get here. And let's just do this and see what happens. So I want to move it, I want to drill it down to to this, I want to drill it down to about here, so I'll just make a mark on the drill because then I can see how far the drill is going in. My handy dandy mark maker. Here we go, that'll drill out that hole and 
I have to cut two, well, that'll save me the time in the future, right? So, so let's see if this actually works, ladies and gentlemen. So that's drilling out the brass right now. And these bits, I think, are fairly tough. I don't know. We'll see. Now, I could use... Um, I could use some oil on these as well. And I don't know if they're sharp or not, but they seem to be taking out the material, so it's not too bad. Let's push them in and see what happens. Now, what I could have done is actually used a uh, smaller bits to start off with. And then went to the larger bit, but I went for it all in one. There you go. And then let me see, just keep going down. And I'm gonna pull this out and see how far I've gone. That's pretty far. That's actually far enough to make that setting, but I'll go a little further in case I have to make another one. Let's drill her in there. Get that material out. I may want to sharpen these later on because it's uh probably advisable to sharpen them every now and then. If you want to go all the way through, so you want a deep hole that goes all the way through, you're going to hit that when you cut it off as well later on. So that's a pretty deep hole there. Yeah, that's probably enough to make three settings. Go a little further on this. And Hang on a second. Is that far enough? Yeah, I think that's far enough. So basically, I'm going enough to make four settings. <laughs> so there we go. So that's that. Let me just speed it up so I can smooth in the inside a bit as I pull it out. And that is how you drill the hole.
So I've gotten this to this point now where I've done a couple shots at this particular jewel uh, setting. Um, and the problem I had is, a, is the depth of the uh, jewel setting. So I've uh, played with the depth. I drilled a long hole so I could try this a number of times. And every time I failed, I could cut back, I could cut back the metal here and try again. So that's a good, good lesson actually. So you can drill a, drill your first hole really long in there, and then when you start using your gravers to cut back, um, you can just keep going until you get it right. So the other thing is I have a um, tool here that I had to make. So this particular tool here, um, I made this tool to shave off the inside of the uh, of the setting. Um, this is a carbide stick, basically, and I made it sharp on on one side. And uh, let me see if I can get the right side here. Uh, I think it's yeah, it's this side here. So, so this is sharp. I'll, I'll use another one to point. So this is sharp on this side here, and right there it's sharp. And then it's also sharp on the end too. So I uh, I made this so it could cut the left inside of the setting as well as cutting the bottom part at the same time. Um, I could have probably tapered just ever so slightly to give my jewel setting a little bit of a taper. So so that that, that was a good tool to make. Um, I'm not sure if it's the most perfect tool. I think it probably could be a little more narrow um, the, the across the width here, the diameter of the tool. That way I can make a smaller setting as well with this. I may have to just uh, go down and uh, fix this tool so it's a little more narrow but the cutting on the edge here and the cutting on the end were essential to to being able to make that setting because as I use my other gravers to uh, get in tight like I use the uh, this one here which is a four millimeter graver to get in there what happened was the bottom part of this graver would touch the bottom part of the setting and it would round out the bottom which would kind of screw up my setting so it wasn't working <clears throat> so I had to make a tool and then this tool here I, I made um, this is like super pointed on the end and I made this to be able to just cut the the edge to make my burnishing material to burnish over the setting so and just like the book says uh, I think the first thing you really need to do here is to make the hole and like drill it in and then make the setting hole and then after I finished all that then I'll then I'll taper this down to, to the size of the hole in the plate um, as my third step and then once I've done that then I'll cut it off and then, then basically once you've done that and you're able to burnish over that setting um, or burnish over the jewel then you've uh, basically made the jewel so uh, so in this the next step I have to do here is actually um, make the line or just make the trench the Marianas trench here uh, that will that will be the um, that will end up being the burnishing material. But to make this trench, I have to be very careful about where I start. I don't know if there's a better method to, to make this trench or start making this trench, but but it's it's kind of, it's a very, 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 very tricky thing to do. It's not, not the easiest thing in the world to do. So I have to pick the right side of this particular tool to make that trench, because I remember making the tool and the shiny side there is the right side because this when this turns it's got to cut into the material and I got to cut in pretty darn close like somewhere like right around there in order to get enough material to wrap around the, the jewel right so if I go out too far I end up uh, getting out to the uh, the edge here and this material I'm going to remove so I want to be really close but not too close that I can't uh, that this just breaks so and if I break this I've got to start again so uh, we're gonna that's the next thing we're gonna do is is cut that little edge all right there's the uh, Mariana's trench cut and I'm gonna go in here and see if I can um, just put the jewel in here and see how well it fits but I'm gonna do that with the camera in the way so you can see how this goes in and just fit that in there. We hit the camera here, but too bad. There it is there. So now I gotta put that jewel in and that little groove I've made, which is the burnishing, I've got to burnish over the jewel. So this is a tricky part. I gotta figure out how to keep that jewel in place um, with shellac or putty or something, but I gotta be able to remove it after the fact. 
so I'm not sure what to do yet. I may just lick the end of it, like lick the jewel, and that might provide enough adhesion so it keeps the jewel in there while I try to burnish it. So there you go. That's it. All right, so here's a good opportunity to describe this tool. I'm going to, this tool here is used for pushing in the uh, outer rim there, the burnishing rim. And I'm going to make sure I have it in the right direction here. So, and you see how that's slanted. You put the edge of this tool right in where the um, burnishing is being done. I'm going to flip glasses here because these ones here can't, are not letting me see what the heck I'm doing. And I'll keep the, uh, keep everything running just because. There we go. It's a little bit better. So this tool, what I'm going to do is come in at an angle and just embed that tool right on the edge right there. And then as this spins, it's going to tuck that, that metal over the jewel. That's my plan. So if I screw this plan up, I of course have to cut another jewel. But I've cut enough, i got enough material here that if I screw up, I just keep going, right? So, so um, I actually found this tool in, in amongst my other burnishing tools, the ones that are, are uh, three-point burnishing. And you put them over the top and you spin it like that. Uh, but this tool, I believe, will work a lot better on in this lathe here. Um, I may be able to use a tool rest to help guide me as well. So if I flip a tool rest over like this, and I have this sort of uh, resting on the edge like that, this will give me some stability in pushing inward to do this. So, But like I said before, the next challenge is actually to get make sure that jewel stays somehow. If anyone's got any good advice there on how to do that, I'd appreciate it. Um, but I believe I'll just put a little bit of spit on the end of it. It should evaporate, and then when I clean the jewel and everything else later on, that'll just come off. So now again, like I said before, if I screwed this up, which I did last time, I just cut all this away, drill another hole, and try again. So it's a sort of a trial and error until I get super good at this. I don't build, I don't do enough jewels uh, settings to uh, to be an expert, but. I, I think if I keep going here, eventually I will be an expert at doing jewel settings. All right, you wouldn't believe where I put my camera. It's kind of underneath, between the lathe, underneath the belt. And this is basically what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to see if I can actually do this with the camera the way where it is without hitting the camera. I have this feeling I'm going to hit something. This goes in right about there, and then this will push inward. So I think I'll put my tool rest a little closer, and uh, so I can get a, a good grip on this. But that's where it's going to go. So that's a pretty close up uh, view of what I'm trying to do here. So I need to put a little bit of oil on the burnisher. So this needs to be oiled so it doesn't grab. So it doesn't grab the uh, the setting. So just a little tiny bit of oil on the top of it, and you can wipe it clean a bit with your thumb, just as long as there's a bit of oil on there, and you're good. And then I got to put the jewel in place, and like I said, I got to somehow get that jewel to stay. The only thing I can think of is is a little bit of moisture on the end. And maybe it stays in place. I don't know. So let's just put that jewel in place now. Very carefully. i use one of my gravers here to help me. And uh, see if I can stick it in. I think my uh, loop too is foggy. I gotta hold that in place while I pull out the toothpick and hopefully the remnants of the toothpick aren't there but I can clean those out after. There we go. The jewel is now sitting in place. I kinda wish I had a way of keeping that jewel rubbed in there so I wouldn't have to worry about it. So I'm still a little bit worried about it popping out, but 
looks like my spit is keeping it in there nicely so now we're gonna uh, try here try again see if this works ladies and gentlemen stand by to stand by I'm hoping this is the absolute success actually looks like it's cutting material off and I don't want it to cut material I just want it to push material so maybe that's just dirt from before just push that in again and that looks like it's cutting so I've got to make sure that this device isn't cutting. That is weird. It does look like it's burnishing over the tool or over the uh, jewel. definitely don't want it to be cutting. I'm going to try to see if that's smooth enough and I'm not cutting any material here. So, so I'll be back in a second just to do a final smoothing of this tool. I smoothened out the tool a bit so it's it's a little better I think. So that pointy edge there looked like it was doing some cutting as opposed to pushing. A little dab of oil on the end there. See if uh, see if I can be successful again. It does look like it's working. I just don't want it to be cutting. Now that's pretty good there, so uh, I think I will I'll be able to stake that in. Let me just I'm gonna touch that with my uh, Rodico and hopefully it doesn't pull the jewel out. So I'm not I think it's in there pretty good though. Let's clean this up just a little bit. And you can see how that's hugging the jewel. So that's uh, pretty darn good I think. Pretty darn good. A little bit more oil here to make sure that this just I just put a dab of oil on it here and just make sure it doesn't uh, bind. Just like that. Hope you guys appreciate this super duper close up because it is a super duper close up. I may have to hit the camera with my burnisher here because it's uh, I'm running out of angle here. All right, so I think that is good, um, and to finish that off. What I'm going to do is take a flat stake and see if I can just push that last bit on. Okay, that's not wide enough, so I need a wider stake than that. So let me pick uh, pick a wider stake. So the stake's not too bad. It's got to go over the burnishing material here, like that.
I think that's good. I think that jewel's in place. I don't think it's going anywhere. Let me have a look here. Let me just move it around here. Is that going anywhere? No, nope, that's solid in place. So there we go. So the jewel's now burnished in place. Now I've got to pull this out a bit and take off some material from the end. So this is about as close as I've ever recorded in uh, burnishing a jewel. So or doing this uh, setting. So this was successful. Um, I just have to, the next step here is to is to take this here and size this. So next step here is I'm going to take take this uh, rod out just a bit here and then I'm going to cut it off somewhere up here somewhere um, and then but but actually before I cut it off I've got to fit it to the plate again and then uh, and then cut it off and then I've got myself a, a decent setting and I can probably flatten this out a bit as well before I do that so I can go down just a bit on that so it's not so it's kind of level with the burnishing so let's just do that to start off with um, and then we'll uh, we'll go the next step here and just take the uh, and, and just grave it down to the right size so I don't want to take too much off here I just want to take enough so that it's level so just lower the uh, Just noticed that my uh, tip over tool rest wasn't in there good, so it could have caused all kinds of issues. So I'm just going to take a little bit of material off here. i be really careful doing this. pretty good there. So that looks flat right now. And uh, Jesus man, I am uh, exhausted from all this thinking. There we go. Um, and that worked really well. There's the jewel. Um, after I finish this setting I may just take a, another stake, like a rounded or concave stake, and and then hit it down just a bit. So I think there's flakes of uh, flakes of brass in there. So I'm not going to make much difference as long as that setting is in place nicely. So let me set myself up now for finishing the plate. Alright, so I've got my uh, Doozy M gauge here. Um, and I'll, basically I need to I think this was uh, 24 was the size I was looking for and if I measure this material here I'm at 20, I'm at 30. Uh, I recall that this is 24 so I'll get it to 25 and then I'll start uh, tapering it down. I'll take it from right about here down. Um, so just, and this goes pretty fast because uh, it's a uh, fairly soft metal. So it's, uh, I think I was saying copper and stuff like that earlier, but it's brass. So I had to go down and ask my wife, what is this stuff anyway? <laughs> it's pretty funny. Uh, I do all this work and watchmaking and stuff, and I just kind of forget what things are called. Anyway, that's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty good setting in there. Let's just adjust my engraver here so I'm close enough to get it, but not too close to get, uh, not too far away for chatter, but close enough to, to remove the material. Actually, that's not too bad there. Probably could go up just a bit. And tighten this up on the bottom. There we go. And tighten this up on top. Is that good? I think that is... Let me, see, let me check and see here. Looks like it's removing lots of material. Now one thing I'm a little concerned with, of course, is that setting on the end. I took material off. 
already and I'm going to be taking more material off and if I get to where that setting is I'm kind of screwed so I'm just going to keep an eye on that and see how how wide that is because it's getting it's not a lot of material right there but as I go in a bit there is so I just have to make sure there's enough to grab that setting and not not too little so, so let's just uh, take this down a bit I'll measure I'll take my uh, plate here and measure it first and see where how far I've got to go it's going to be tight I tell you so if that's this if I end up with a problem like that um, then I can't have my Mariana's trench be so deep because that will cause a problem so that's the only next thing that could be the issue here and if that is the issue then I will start again so I am not afraid of starting again but I'll shave the edge here just so I can see how close I am to failure Yeah, that's like super close right there and uh, is that gonna fit in because if that fits it would be a thing of beauty oh it's so friggin close that is so friggin close um, let me take a little bit more off here and see how close I get here to the edge Man, geez, Ricky. Oh, that's the wrong hole. Oh, that's the right hole. Yeah, you know what? There might not be enough material here to go in there. Which means my trench is too wide. Which means i got to make a narrower trench. Damn, this could be an issue. This could be an issue. Yeah, that's about as narrow as it gets here. I'm tapering it so I can get to the edge and uh, and uh, see if that if the setting will go into the hole. Oh, this is so friggin' close. A little bit more. I think I'm going to end up skinning this. So at the end of the day. <laughs> Jesus, uh, I don't want to have to make another one, but if I do, I do, right? It's almost fitting right there. Almost is not close enough. It's good enough in grenades, hand grenades and some other things, I think. It's so thin. Just needs to go in, man. Just needs to go in. Come on, go in. It's kind of going in. Just a tiny bit more on the edge here, and then I'll just see if I can flatten the whole thing out. I don't want to have to cut a new rod.
It's going to be close. Come on, go in. I'm praying here, okay? Wants to fit. Just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more. I'm going to end up skinning this a bit, though. I know it. Because it's so tight. Alright, let's try again. It's going to be like a three hour video. It's almost in. <clears throat> I'm really afraid of skinning the damn thing, so. So I skin it, I get no material left to grab the bottom part. So. I'm not worried about it up here. I'm just worried about it at the tip. I probably shouldn't have cut it. The first cut I made was a bit wide on the trench, so I needed to make it a bit more narrow. And, uh, I didn't, so... Oh, wow. Come on, please fit. Please fit. This is the world of almost here. It's almost fitting. So friggin' close. Now I got a feeling I'm going to have to do this again because I've got no material left here to cut. Let's see if I can get a little bit more off and then it's going to snag it and then it'll be screwed. So. Apologize for all the work here. This is not easy stuff to do. Damn, this feels like it's so close to fitting. I mean, alternative three would be to enlarge the hole size, but I don't want to do that either because then I got screws in there I got to deal with. So I'll just keep cutting away here and see if I can screw this up. See all of the uh, trials and tribulations of doing this. It's not easy. Yeah, I think I took too much material off the trench. The trench. 
I'm almost at the jewel setting right now, so. I guess if it gets super thin, I could always push it in, right? Maybe I should try that, because I could push the edge in, and that would get rid of that part that's uh, questioning, questionable. Like if I use my burnisher and just push that edge in, like this, then I'm getting rid of the part that I, uh, I'm having problems with, right? Man, I'm thinking way outside the box here, baby. Way outside the box. This might work, actually. You see if that fits in at all. If it doesn't, then I gotta start over here. But it might, who knows. Alright, so the lip is fitting in but just barely. I pushed it inward, so if I remove more material then, can it, will it go all the way in? That is the question is. Cut a little bit more here and then see if I can. friggin fitting here so close so close I'm gonna burnish it just a bit more here Take a little more material off. And then check the fit. Just smudge this a bit. Good. You're watching some interesting little work being done here. <clears throat> I'm still praying, by the way. Just hoping this works and fits. It's right on the edge. I think I need to just take a smidgen off here. Uh, I'm continuing to record it so you can hear my frustrating yawns and sighs. funny with this micro work you just have to take off the smallest bit and then it fits it's uh, it's like making a balance staff when you're working on it at the very end it doesn't take much to for the whole thing to just work so that's starting to go in nicely it looks like it's yeah I'm getting a bit of depth there and I will cheer if I'm successful okay Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> wow. What a job. Turn this the right way. Oh man, that is so close. Look at it from the other side here. So close. <clears throat> you guys can fast forward this if you're falling asleep. So I don't want you to keep watching something that's boring you to death. see now all right so that's it's going in pretty far now so a little tiny bit more and that should be do that should be it so I'm just hoping I don't sugar this up <laughs> it's going to take material off not at the end but on the on this side <clears throat> it's right where the bend is so there's a little tiny bit of a bend right here so i gotta take just a bit off here well you see how that piece came off it's basically um part of that outer edge so i don't want to lose that that is not what I want to lose. So I gotta pull that off. And I think I've gone as deep as I can possibly go here without screwing this up. Right, let me look at this from the other side and see how far down it goes. success here I'm not sure take a little more off I think I got to focus on the not on the end here but right, right just before the end here So that's going in. Pretty far. I can see where it's stopping, so I think I can fix that. Uh, again, don't take off too much because you're screwing yourself. I don't think I can afford to take off any more material. So the, the right solution would have been to find a jewel that's a little bit smaller than this. It'd give me more material to work with. That's going in though. So how far is that going in? I have to have a look from the other side. And it still has a bit of distance to go, but 
as you can see it's stuck in there if I let go of the plate you can see the plate is now being held by the uh, the movement I just spin this while it's in here and see where my line is it looks like there's a line right right here so that's just a high point Yeah, so again, the lesson here is that if you get a smaller jewel, you're not going to run into this problem. You're going to basically be able to put this right in without, a, without the problems I'm having here. So I'm trying to get it past this point here so like the jewel will sit down and rest on that first step. And if I look at that first step, um, just get my tweezers out here and just clean this up in just a bit. Now that first step isn't very deep, so it's not uh, it's not like it's going in really far. It's going in just a bit. Clean the gunk out of it. Might fit better. what it looks like right there. I think it's bottoming out there. Not 100% sure, but... Alright, one more cut. This is probably the one that's going to screw everything up. I think that's good enough because if I tap that in that will be sitting nicely if I can look closer here double lens it so I can see really close I'm going to hit the camera with my head I apologize That is pretty close. There's the old camera with the head tap. Yeah, it's going in pretty far. I think it's hitting the step. I can take a little material off further away now because I'm not as concerned about this part. So, I think one of my lenses is dirty, you know, and isn't. Anyway, I'm going to take a little material off up here because I don't think there's a trench up here. I think it's going in the distance of the step. 
Now this jewel setting did not have a step, the existing jewel setting. Let me look at that again to make sure I don't have a stepping problem. I don't recall this jewel having a step. No, this jewel just went straight in. No step. <clears throat> Let me show you the jewel here really quickly here. I do not I do not I do not see a step in here at all. Yeah, there's no step here. This is how thin the jewel is. So it's uh, mighty mighty thin, so it doesn't have a step on it. But I'm gonna cut it away up here a bit. So I've got plenty of room. And I'm gonna call it and then trim it back. I may take just a bit more material off. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's a pretty thin little jewel though. Man, this is killing me, Jerry. It's killing me. I think it for this part of the adventure. <clears throat> Making a jewel setting. Holy crap. Oh yeah, that's in there nicely. As you can see, if I just do this, you'll see that it's like that. You'll see that it's sitting in there very nicely. So I'll just get a little bit of a close-up here for you and then we'll uh, flip to the next step. Alright, there's a setting, there's a setting burnished in place, and then the plate just fits on over the plate like this, and if I put this in while you're watching, see if it sticks at the other side, there we go, and you can see how that fits perfectly, so it's hitting the, uh, the edge there, so that's as far as it has to go, and that's in nicely, so I may tap the end again though, with a steak, just tap, 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 just a bit to flatten it out a bit. So now we've got to cut it off and uh, flip it around and <clears throat> put it in a jewel chuck and then work on the other side. There, I just <clears throat> I've decided just to tap the end just a bit, just so if there's any any material that's there, sorry, any the burnishing is off just a bit, this should help flatten it out. But I don't want to tap it too hard. Just want a couple of light taps on the end. should be good <clears throat> so now I've got to cut this off um, I tap the end of this with a uh, with a stake just ever so lightly and then I took the old jewel setting like this I was I thought I was recording and I wasn't but I took the old jewel setting and I measured it like that and then I made a line here to know where to cut it off and leave yourself a little bit of material because you're gonna flip that around and put it into a uh, gonna put it into a chuck, a jeweling chuck. I might hit the hole when I'm doing this, so I'm gonna do it double wide, double thick, like a double wide trailer. If I hit the hole, it's probably gonna grab, so I gotta watch it. I'm not going to press very hard because if it grabs, it's going to just tear right off.
smarter move might be to saw it off. Now just to protect the setting on the end, I'm going to put a little tiny blob of Rotico. And I'm going to see if I can spin this with the Rotico on there. Because I don't want this setting to be ruined in any way. So I'm going to see if I can just blob the Rotico on the end here. And spin it with the Rotico. What do you think? Will that work? I think I need a smaller blob of Rotico. A half a blob of Rotico and put that on the end. I think i got to cut my thumbnail. I like a longer thumbnail for working on the uh, pocket watches and opening the lids up and stuff, but maybe not that long. I'm getting close to the hole. Yeah, I might have trimmed it past the hole. There we go, just fell. And is it safe? I think it's safe. Oh, there's the hole. I knew the hole was there. So let me just show you this. So there it is. And there's the little hole on the other end. So which should be exposing the jewel on the other side. Which is kind of cool. So I'm going to clean that up and be right back. All right, there's the jewel setting there. It's nice on one side and it still needs to be uh, finalized on the other side. So I'm going to put this into a chuck and then chuck it up on the lathe here. So I did pick the chuck earlier that could hold that. So this leave is the right chuck to do the job. It's a 40. So I'm going to chuck this up with a uh, jeweling chuck right now. All right, I've got super dirty fingernails, but that's from going down and doing all the polishing on that tool. So here's the jeweling chuck, and I've got this sitting in the jeweling chuck. Maybe a bit, uh, not maybe a bit too, uh, too deep in this chuck, but um, I'll use this chuck combined with I think this one is the one that fits. Yeah, this one here, and that'll squeeze that, and then I can work on the end of that jewel or in that setting. Setting, that's what it's called. There, I've got the jeweling chuck in here. Um, it's a little, it's a little um, deep. I think the setting I made is a bit deep in this chuck, but I'm going to start with this anyway and uh, snug that up a bit. And you don't want to snug it up to the point where you're ruining the uh, piece itself, right? So you don't want to crack the jewel. Is basically what I'm trying to say. So you want to make sure it's close enough, but not cracking the jewel. 
And I want to work on the end of this thing, so I don't need this graver to be like too close. But and I'm going to face it off using my graver here, so I just have to look and see where this is ending up. So that's not too bad there. And if I look at the original um, jewel, um, look at that original jewel, I'm going to look at what the end looks like. It's kind of just flat. It's got a little tiny bit of a fancy little bevel there, but um, it's sort of flat. And yeah, it's kind of flat. So I just need to get rid of the material in the end there and uh, go from there. So let's see what this does to me, ladies and germs. So just widening it up here. And I'm going to look in the hole to make sure I'm not so too close to the actual rim there on the other side. I think I can cut it right to the edge. I got to get nice and close and have a look at this to make sure I'm not screwing this up. There, I made a slight bevel on the inside just by uh, cutting away at this angle here. I just took a little tiny bit of material off to make that bevel. So that's so pretty darn good. I think I'm just going to leave it like that. So let's have a look at the end result and see if this works. All right, there's the old setting in the middle, and there's a new setting beside it. And that's the top of the new setting. There's a little tiny shard of, uh, of uh, just a bit of brass on the top of that that i got to get out. So I'm not going to worry about that now. But if I turn this over, put on a different set of glasses so I can do it without fumbling. Turn that over and let's look at the other side of that setting. Again, wrong glasses. Anyway, that's the setting there on the, on the top. Looks great, as you can see. It's a, I think a perfect setting. It's a beautiful setting. And I turn it around the other way. Um, and that's it from the back. And that's burnished in again. It looks a lot better than what you can see in the video here because it looks kind of scrapey, but it's not. Um, and that's the old, this is the old setting from the back there that I opened up um, and the jewel sitting in there nicely in the new setting so again if you look at that I think it's the camera angle or something but it looks a lot better from the uh, top without uh, off camera anyway that's the, the jewel burnished in nicely uh, I'll see if I can lift this thing up at all hold it at an angle a bit there we go that's holding it at a bit of an angle so you can see the the burnishing in there. Um, I just need to clean that up with some Rodico, but that jewel is burnished in nicely. That's not going to go anywhere. There we go. That's a good shot there. That's the jewel sitting in its new home and ready to uh, ready to be uh, installed. There we go. So let's just install this and see what it looks like. All right, there's the new setting. It's right here. So I just push this down and it it flushed up with the bottom of the uh, with the base and I just have to put the screws in right now so I'm just hoping these screws will fit and work perfectly because you never know so I'm just going to uh, put a screw in here and these screws are meant to uh, hold the uh, hold the setting down I'm shaking a little bit this morning. I didn't even have a lot of coffee. Ugh. 
What a job, man. What a job. And screw number one. That fit perfectly. And then screw number two. I think I'm just nervous because of all this work I've been doing. All right, why are you jumping away here? Let me put this back so you can get a good visual on this. I'm a little bit shaky this morning. I'm bent over too much. I'm not. I'm, I'm on the edge of my table. This is not where I ought to be. Come on, catch, catch. All right, that didn't catch. I was going to turn the video off and start over again because I'm getting sick of chasing a screw. I know you're watching me and saying, what the hell is he up to? But I got the lathe in front of me right now, and I got the screwdriver. I'm going to pick a bit of a bigger screwdriver here, but I've got the uh, lathe in front of me, and I got no room. I'm at the very end of my table. And I'm holding my breath. There we go. That's it. That is it. That is a thing. There's the setting. That is a thing of beauty. And that's the new setting. And if I flip that around, you'll see the setting from the other side. There it is from the other side. And it's bottoming out right where that lip was. So that's exactly where that was supposed to be. Um, so that's the setting there. And we're just going to have to see if that works later. And this was the old setting here that I pushed out. That was the old setting there. And there we go. That was the old setting, not pushed in, of course. And it has now been replaced thing of beauty. So let's just have a little chat and finish this off. All right, last set, last test. I threw the gears in backwards, and this is I, I'm calling this a setting test. So it fits in nicely. The uh, gears rotate, which is nice. Um, and if I pull this wheel out here, that's the setting in the back, a new setting right there that's been screwed in, and you can see how that fits down because the um, the pinion fits into that slot and then it fits in there. It was worrying me a bit because I was thinking it's too shallow, but the old one was there as well, so it wasn't too shallow. So that's it there. So that's the new setting in there. Um, and just remove this here and flip that around for you so you can see what it looks like again. And that's what it looks like from the other side. Uh, I think it's a thing of beauty. It makes the other setting look ugly. So I'll have to either... And this is a center wheel setting I gotta, I gotta deal with too, because this is a it's cracked on the other side. I'm not sure whether I should repair it or not, but it's not a, it's kind of a flat, like a, like a horizontal crack. So, but this one here absolutely needed a new setting. And, and as you saw, it was a job and a half. I'm probably getting better at it now. So let's finish off the video. All right. How are you guys doing? That was it. That was the hardest job I've had in a little while. I'm going to fix this collar. It's International Shitty Collar Week. Okay, International Shitty Collar Week. So on the left hand side, you can see the new setting that I made. There it is there. Um, and I did a wheel test just before, um, uh, just a few minutes ago. And it makes the uh, old setting in the center look really shitty. So <laughs> this is the new setting. Um, let me see a couple things I've learned from doing this job. Uh, the first thing is I've got this uh, set of burnishing tools these are the tools here and let me just grab these tools and show you and they come in as a set like this and they've got some tools for widening out the setting and um, to, to get the jewel out or to widen the setting to push a new jewel in and they've got some tools that are kind of concavey to to uh, to burnish the setting in but 
I tell you, I went downstairs where my evil Frankenstein lab is, and I took this third or this other tool that came in with it. And let me just put this down here, and you can see that. And you see how that's an angle, so that little the the higher point goes into where the the uh, the Mariana trench goes. So you dig your little trench to make your burnishing material, and then um, and oil it. And as I showed you in the video, and you just push, you burnish the metal onto the uh, back of the jewel. So that worked exceptionally well so a lot of trial and error in this video so the first I think I went through two two separate digs to make the uh, hole and then try to get the jewel in and another dig to try to do that and I was getting tired of doing digs but the last one was successful um, you got to cut that trench really close to the uh, to the edge of the hole where the jewel is um, so the other thing I did was I took one of my um, gravers that I have here I'll show you in the bottom left again but this is a, a this is carbide steel rod. So I went into my Frankenstein lab uh, and I took this carbide steel rod. Let me just move this over just a bit. Um, and I shaped it in a way that one side cuts the inside of that, uh, will cut the inside of the hole where the jewel goes and the bottom or the base part of it, the end part of it, will cut the hole. So I was able to carve a really nice hole using this tool. I probably could put a bit of a bevel or an angle on that, um, maybe an angle like like a 60 degree angle like that or something on the end, not 60, probably but a 10 degree angle. And that way when you're using seat stools and they taper on the end, it'll probably fit even better. So, But this jewel fit in very nicely. Um, so that's that thing that I, new tool that I put together. And then the, another one I put together, I've got another one of these. Uh, these uh, carbide round carbide bits and I went down into my Frankenstein lab again and I gotta mark which parts up and down on this thing but I made it into a point that could grave I think that's the upper part right there I think that's it yeah that's it there so I could push that in to make the trench this is super super small and, uh, and just a, if you can see it there it's just a little tiny point on the end um, and I made it try to make it flat on one side and angled on the other uh, to cut that trench, just like I showed you in the book initially when we when we looked at the book at the very very beginning of the video. So this was a, I was able to cut the trench on this. But uh, another thing I learned is that if your jewel is too big, this jewel was a little tiny bit too too big. I think it was a 180. Um, so it was a it ended up being like a 3180. So 180 was a bit too big, not giving me a lot of material to work with. Uh, when I dug the trench and it got close to the edge of where the where this new setting would be touching uh, the the side wall of the hole and the uh, plate of the movement so so uh, correct jewel size is necessary I, I was going to use a 150 jewel and I looked in the inside of that jewel and where the hole is on that jewel it wasn't very thick there wasn't a lot of material there and this is an intermediate wheel running off of the uh, center wheel so there's probably a lot more uh, pressure on this particular uh, wheel, like stress on this wheel, than there is on the others. So I think the center wheel probably has the most stress. That's why the jewel hole is big and the pivots are huge on it. And when you progressively get down the jewel train, there's less stress on the pivots as you go down. So this is sort of the second most stress on the pivot. So you got to make sure you have a thick enough uh, jewel in there. So getting the exact replacement may be absolutely impossible, but I was able to get a seat's jewel as part of my massive collection of seat stools. <laughs> I'm always missing the one I need though. Still looking for a center hole jewel. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, and I was able to do that. So then when I um, when I carved this thing, uh, also uh, another thing is that I, I, I actually worked out really well because I beveled, it's slightly beveled as you can see, so I beveled it towards the jewel. Um, still leaving material on the other side of that bevel that holds the jewel in place, right? So. So it's kind of like it forms like a V on on the edge of the jewel. So that's 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 how that worked. And I put the screws in. I showed you me. I showed you myself putting the screws in. This particular setting didn't have any notches that you needed to cut for the screws, but you'd need a screw notch cutter for uh, if you're going to uh, build a setting that actually has a notch. I'm not sure how you do it without a a notch cutter. That'd be very difficult. And that's the other side of the uh, setting there. Um, and it's very nicely put in. It's, the jewel will not come out. That's uh, nicely uh, burnished in, in place. So, 
So anyway, that's that's it for this video. I think it's probably two and a half hours long. I decided to do the whole damn thing, and I put in all my scars in this video. Um, I was I hadn't cut a I hadn't made a setting for like a, a year and a half maybe. It's been a while since I made a setting, and I made another video on how to make a setting. Uh, but this one I decided to make the most comprehensive video. So so those are the lessons there. Uh, you may have to build some tools to help you with. Uh, cutting the trench that you need to have the material that wraps over the back of the jewel um, and and so you can and that this this here was a lifesaver this particular uh, tool that I showed you earlier I'll just stick it under here this was a lifesaver um, you've got to go down and we got to polish the crap out of this I bought a, uh, a holder for my for my Dremel tool and I put a pad on there with a bit of uh, polishing material and I polished the crap out of it so it won't snag the material as it's as it's spinning around. I did do it on the lathe. I didn't basically turn the spindle by hand. I actually hit the hit the gas on the lathe and I spun it very slowly. Um, and I held this at a bit of an angle and I put a bit of oil on it. So I just use same oil I use for my lathe, which is 1W20 synthetic oil. So I put a little bit of 1W20 synth on it and it, uh, it allowed me to, to burnish that in place without uh, grabbing the material and screwing it up. So so there you go. That's the uh, the video. Um, if you got absolutely zero to do uh, and you want to watch uh, my complete video on how I did this, and by all means. Um, the other lesson, I, one more lesson I learned is when I cut my stock material, that's it there, is that I cut enough material, enough material to allow me to fail a few times. So I cut it probably an inch and a half long. Um, and then and these things are very small. So that allowed me to drill through. And I drilled through, as you saw with my... Uh, my drill bits there that I have, my vintage drill bits, I drilled through quite deep into that material. So if I screwed up, I just had to face it off um, and then start again, right? Start again. And, and I did it the first few times I tried to use my very, these gravers are, are really easy to use. And let's put them on the bottom again. They're really nice to use uh, for, for making a, uh, a balance staff. I usually use this one to start off the staff because it's pretty big. And then I go to my uh, th these ones here, uh, which are which are like two millimeter and four millimeter uh, round and flat. So this is the two millimeter flat. Uh, I made a little mark, a little black mark on the top, so I could see how deep I was going into the setting. But at the end of the day, this kind of screwed up because the base of this thing, as it goes down the angle, the base of this thing actually touched the setting when I went in, and it rounded off the outer edge. And I needed that outer edge to be flat so I could use my other pointy pointy tool here to dig my Mariana's Trench, right? So so uh, I hope it's called the Mariana Trench because I've been using it a lot. And if it's not the Mariana Trench, I'll feel like a dummy. So anyway, so that's it. That's a, a, a setting, a jewel setting made on a pocket watch. Uh, this is probably one of the harder jobs you're going to do in watch repair, um, unless you're make, actually making a gear. Uh, I think this is way harder than repivoting. It's way harder than making a balance staff, I believe. Because um, I made quite a few balance staffs successfully, but this this job is like hell on wheels, man. Because you gotta it's light, it's soft material, and you gotta be absolutely precise when you're doing it. So as I do it more, um, I uh, I will get better at it, of course. Uh, and I've got for this particular watch, I believe I have um, another perhaps perhaps two settings to make. Hopefully not, but I think I have two settings to make, two more settings to make on this watch. It takes a lot of time just for the uh, the guy whose watch I'm fixing here, so the the work is worth a lot more than the uh, the watch itself, but it means a lot to him. So let's get this uh, watch fixed and running, and um, that's how to make a balance setting. So thanks for watching my video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit like and share my channel with other folks. Uh, pretty detailed uh, videos on here and if you want to contact me or just say great job or whatever I, I love the compliments on a real ham this is a long one I'm gonna it's I, as you it's not published yet but I'm gonna publish it in five seconds so and you can contact me at where's my little hand here there we go at uh, jdwatchservice at gmail.com jdwatchservice at gmail.com if you want me to do any work like if you have a setting that's no good for your watch and you want me to fix it and make a setting just give me a call because I can make those too so Anyway, there you go. I think this is the best video on YouTube for making a watch uh, setting. I've seen them all, and I don't see anyone that's as comprehensive as this. Like I said to you guys before, I leave all my warts in there, so you can see 
the thinking pattern that I go through when I'm trying to figure out how to do this. The book was right. You start off with your stock material, and then and then you don't you don't taper down the diameter first like I did the first time. You you basically cut the setting jewel, put the jewel in, burnish it, and do all that stuff, and then cut it down. So the book was right. I thought it could cheat and do this do the outside rim first, and then do it that way. But but you're losing strength on the wall when you do that, the outer wall. So the book was right. So read your book. And that book, this that was the Chicago School of Watchmaking. Uh, chapter 30 or section 30, I think chapter 30, uh, it's called Lathe Work. So um, use that as a reference if you need to, but this video will show you everything you need to know. So have a good day, stay safe, um, uh, wear your mask if you have got one. Uh, if you don't, stay home. So, uh, and uh, thanks for watching this video and, and have a good time today, please.